In this video, we're going to introduce Pydantic and we're going to see how it's used with FastAPI and we're going to create some models based on the schemas that we already have in our sample application. And we'll also see how we can work with nested models in a FastAPI application. Let's dive in. We have the documentation open for Pydantic and we can see that it's the most widely used data validation library for Python. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Pydantic, I did a YouTube series on this library in the past that should be appearing on the screen now. But what Pydantic allows us to do in a nutshell is create classes that inherit from its base model. And these classes contain fields that define the structure of a piece of data that you're looking at. So for example, a delivery might have a timestamp and some dimensions, and you can take each of these fields and you can add a data type to them using the Python type hinting. So this kind of package is very helpful when you're validating data that's coming into your API, for example, in a request body. You can validate that data and you can then decide whether or not you want to actually add that data to your database, just as an example. And Pydantic has many use cases, but fast API is arguably one of the most common. So what we're going to do now is just dive into the video and I'm going to open up VS Code and we're going to start defining some models. Again, if you're interested in more, check out the series that I did before. For now, let's create a schemas.py file and in this file, we're going to create the schema and that's basically the Pydantic classes that we're going to use in this application. To start with, in main.py, in the last video, we created this enum class. I'm actually going to cut that out and I'm going to paste it into schemas.py as well as the import itself at the top here. So let's cut that out and paste that into the schemas.py file. So in the schemas file, we're going to define any kind of data that we have in the application, as well as the model classes that define the structure of that data. And that's why for this video example, I'm going to move the enum into this file. We don't want the main.py file becoming cluttered with all sorts of different types of code. So it's a good practice to create modules for specific things in your application. And what I like to do in FastAPI is create a schema.py file and add all of my PyDan schemas to that file. So with that said, let's now import from Pydantic that base model class that we saw. And the base model is what we're going to create a subclass from. And we're going to do that just below the enum here. And the data that we're modeling is data for music bands. So we're going to create the class called band and that's going to inherit from that base model. And now we define the fields that we want on that particular class. Now, in order to get the fields, what I'm going to do is go back to main.py. We defined this list of dictionaries in the previous videos. What we're going to do is copy one of those. And I'm just going to add this as a comment just now where we define this schema. So the band model will have an ID and that's going to have a data type of integer. Bands will also have a name, which is going to be a string and a genre. And for now, I'm just going to set that equal to a string as well. We have above this class, the enum here containing the genre URL choices, but that's specific to the URL, which we know will lowercase any kind of genre that we pass in. So the values for this enum are in lowercase, whereas we have a genre here within the dictionary and the starting letters for those values are in uppercase. So we're not going to use this directly because the actual values here would not map to what we have here in the dictionary. Now we'll see later on ways in which we can limit the genre field of the model to a predefined set of values. But for now, that's enough for this model. We're going to remove the comment. We have a very simple class here with an ID, a name and a genre field. What we now need to do is go back to our main.py file and we're going to import those two objects from our new schemas.py file. So from schemas, let's import the genre URL choices and also the band model class. And we're going to change this function here. And this is the handler function for returning a list of all of the bands that we have in the database. And I say database, but actually I'm referring to this hard coded list at the moment. We'll add the database later in the series. So what we're going to do is change the return type rather than a list of dictionaries. We're going to change that to a list of these band objects. And the logic for this function, rather than returning that list of dictionaries, we're going to convert each dictionary to the Pydantic model instance. And we can do that by taking the band model and we're going to unpack all of the keys and the values for each band in that list of bands. And we can do that with this statement here. It's a list comprehension in Python. And for each band in the list of bands, in other words, each one of these, we're going to take each key and value and pass it in to the constructor for this band Pydantic model. Now, if we save this and go to the terminal, what I'm going to do is run the uvicorn server here. We can do that with the command uvicorn main colon app. And as before, I'm passing the reload flag here. 
Now that's going to start a server. What I'm going to do is go to the browser and we're going to navigate to this slash bands endpoint. And this is the response that we're getting. It's exactly the same before. We have all of the bands listed out in this API response. Now, why have we used Pydantic? What's the benefit of using this model class instead of just using a dictionary? Well, first of all, we have data validation built in. When you tell the endpoint that we're returning a dictionary, there's no validation whatsoever on that data. But on the other hand, when we tell it that we're returning a list of these model classes, the endpoint is going to take each field in that model and it's going to apply the validation logic. So for example, if we passed a string as the ID, it's going to reject that. So we get that extra validation of the data that we're actually returning in this case from the API. And another benefit of using the Pydantic model class in your endpoints is you get the documentation for that particular model. So if we look at the endpoint slash bands here, what we have now as a successful example of the response is the correct schema down here that contains a list of these objects and the actual objects now, we know the names of the fields that we're expecting to get back in the response. So we know, for example, that we have an ID, a name and a genre. And we also get a sample value for each of those fields based on the data type that's used. So by using the Pydantic model, our documentation gets much more information about the types of re responses in this case that we're sending back. And it gives us better documentation to share with consumers of the API. So let's now go back to VS Code and refactor the other endpoint. So this one is to fetch a single band by the ID that's passed in as a path parameter. Currently that is returning a dictionary, but we're going to change that to return an instance of the band model. And we should say that FastAPI obviously works very well with Pydantic. And when we specify that a Pydantic model or a list of these models should be the return type, FastAPI will take care of converting those model instances to JSON data. So this endpoint should now return a band. What we need to do is just change a little bit of the logic here. We're currently fetching the band based on looking up the ID here. So instead of just returning the dictionary, we can then again create the band object and unpack the keys and the values from that dictionary. And if we save this and go back to our browser here, I'm gonna to go to localhost 8000 slash bands and let's add the ID to here and we get back the correct value. And again, let's go to the documentation. If we look at bands slash band ID, what we had before, all that the documentation knew here was that we were returning some kind of dictionary. It didn't know anything about the keys and the values in that dictionary. But if we refresh this page, now that we've added the Pydantic model and we go back to that endpoint, we can now see we get a sample schema. So again, much more information for the consumers of your APIs. And that includes maybe front-end developers that are integrating with that API. Those developers, if they're building a React app or something, they need to know the names and values of these fields. And this allows them to build out the schemas on the front-end and show that data ultimately in the user interface. Now, so far we're just modeling and returning data that's being returned from our API, but we can also use these Pydantic model classes to create a structure around the expected data that's sent in a post request in the request body. And in those circumstances, when your clients are sending data to you, validating that data correctly becomes even more important. So we'll see examples of that in the next couple of videos in this series. Now, what I want to look at now is I want to look at nesting Pydantic models. So let's go to schemas.py. Currently, we have a band model, but let's say we wanted to allow a band to have a list of zero or more albums. And this is natural. Some bands have not yet released an album, but some bands have been around for a long time and they might have 30 or 40 albums. What we can do here is create a new Pydantic model class and we're going to call that album and that's going to inherit from the base model. And I'm just going to keep this simple and add two fields to the album model. So an album has a title, which is going to be a string. And an album also has a release date. And we're going to set that to a date object in Python. And we need to import that at the top. So at the top, I'm going to say from date time, let's import that date object. Now we could add additional fields to the album, such as genre. Now we already have the genre in the band, but some bands, maybe think of Radiohead or something, they change genres sometimes from album to album. But we're gonna keep this simple for now and just keep two fields on the album model. Now what we need to do in the band model, because a band can have a list of albums, is we're going to add a new field called albums, and we're going to make that equal to a list of these album models. And we're getting this yellow line, and that's because I've defined the album model underneath the band. So if we reverse the order of that, we're going to 
remove that error. So a band is going to have a list of albums, but of course, as I said, some bands have not yet released an album. So we're going to set a default value on this field, and we're going to default that to an empty list. So let's save the schemas.py file. And now that we've added a new field to the band model, how is that going to affect our two endpoints that are returning the list of these models and also a single instance of the model? Let's go back to the browser and we're going to go to localhost 8000. Now this is the detail page that returns a single band. If we now send this request again to the server, we get the new key and value here. So we have albums and that's returning that empty list. And if we go back to the list page for all of the bands at the slash bands endpoint, we see now that every single band in that list has that albums key. And for all of them, of course, we have an empty list as the value. And the reason that's an empty list is because in our model, we've set that default value. We could have set that to none, for example, and if we go back and refresh the page, that changes to null. So the default value can be used as a placeholder for when the values are actually missing from the model, and you want to set some kind of sensible default. So let's change that back to a list, and what we're going to do now is go back to main.py. And I'm going to go back to this hard-coded list of bands. And what I'm going to do is, for the band Black Sabbath, I'm going to actually add a new key here called Albums. And we're going to set that equal to a single album in this case. It's a list containing a single dictionary that represents the data for that album. And that has two keys, one for the title, Master of Reality, and the second key is for the release date. And you can see that that was released according to Wikipedia, at least on that specific date in 1971. So we've added an album, and what's gonna happen now, if we go back to the endpoint, if we refresh this page, you can see that now for Black Sabbath, we're actually getting that nested JSON data. So we have a key for the albums, but unlike before, there is now actually an object within the resulting list, and we're getting all of the benefits of Pydantic even in that nested model. So all we need to do is define that, set, that nested model, that child model, and what we can do then in the parent model is add a reference to that model, and any validations on that child model will be performed when we send that nested data for the band. And just to show an example of that, if we go back to main.py and we change one of these keys, for example, title, let's change that to titles and go back to this endpoint. And now we're going to get an internal server error. And that's because we don't have a schema that conforms to what we specified here in the album class. And another example of this data validation, if we go back to main.py, we're gonna change the key back to the correct name, which is title, but the value we're expecting here is a string. If we change that to a number, for example, let's just say the number two. If we go back to the browser again, when we refresh this page, we're going to get that internal ser server error. And on the terminal, you can see the error that we're getting. The input should be a valid string, but it's currently not a string, it's just a number two. So let's change that back to master of reality, back to a string, and we're gonna go back to the page and refresh this page. We now get the list of all of the bands, and this is also gonna work with the detail page, and you can see Black Sabbath has this ID, so if we go back to the URL and we specify that ID, we're getting the detail page for Black Sabbath that contains that album that we added. And if we add another album, just as a demonstration here, I'm gonna copy this down, it's the same name, obviously you wouldn't do this in real life, but if we go back here and refresh, we get all of the albums associated with that band in the response. So that's all for this video. We've seen how to use Pydantic models within a fast API application. And we've seen, if we go back to main.py, how to use those models as type hints in the returned content from our handler functions. Later on, we'll see how we can use Pydantic models to give proper validation to parameters that are coming into our API handler functions. And in this video, we also saw how we can use nested models in a Pydantic schema, and also how we use the model classes and how they augment the API documentation with information about the schema that's going to be coming back from the response. In the next video, we're going to look at query parameters in FastAPI, and we're going to see how we can use the enum class that we defined earlier in the last video to perform data validation on those query parameters. So thanks again for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to the channel. And if you're enjoying this content, please consider buying the channel a coffee. There's a link in the description of the video and we'll see you in the next video.